Hey guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about using loop exit cases to end your robot's line falling and allow it to move on to the next part of your program. So the purpose of a loop exit case is to answer the question, what do I do when my robot's done line falling? Now in all of my previous tutorials I showed you line falling programs and I made them with the loop set to infinity. So if you would put the robot on the line, it would fall to the line, great, but if the line ended or you wanted the robot to do something else, it would still follow the line. And so this video is going to teach you how to tell your robot when to stop when you want it to and exit the line follower so it can then proceed to the next part of its program. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do a loop exit on a line follower because that's what I see requested most often but this will work on any program that's contained within a loop block and I'm conveniently using the program that I showed you last week the proportional line follower. Now in order to make your loop exit you're going to have to change this infinity case which is default on all loops to some kind of external sensor and you have any number of options uh, that you can use to end your line following. You can do it based on time, a logic condition, number of repetitions of the loop, uh, a Bluetooth message, sound sensor, um, motor rotation is very popular. Today I'm going to show you how to do it with a color sensor in my example. So let's say there's a color patch that's red on the end of the line you want to follow. So you can set this to color and set it to whatever color you're looking for, in my case red. If you're going to use a color sensor as your loop exit for your line follower, I very strongly recommend that you use a separate sensor for each function. If you try to use the same sensor for line following and loop exit at the same time, the sensor will flip back and forth between modes really quickly, and this is going to make your line following unreliable. So with that being said, I'm going to make the sensor that looks out for the color patch on the ground a separate sensor than the one that does line following. So the one sensor isn't overburdened with doing too many tasks at once. And I'm simply going to change this to port 2 because I'll have a separate sensor in port 2 that looks out for this color patch. Now I've successfully set up my loop exit as I want it to. So whenever I'm line following and my sensor in port 2 sees that color patch on the ground, the loop is going to exit and move on to whatever programming that you have afterwards. Now I don't have anything, but this could be whatever you want, and if you're using it for FLL, of course you can have a long chain of sequential programming after this. But for this example, I'm just going to take out a block to stop my motors and play some kind of sound, and then turn on the brick lights so we know that the robot has reached its destination because it's going to stop, uh, light up, and then play a sound. In this week's tutorial, I taught you how to do loop exits for the sensors that are included in the EV3 kit and the EV3 software. However, if you're interested in doing loop exits for third-party sensors, such as the high Technic color sensor, there are some extra steps involved. Next week, I'm going to be showing you how to do a loop exit for third-party sensors like the high Technic color sensor. So if you're interested in that, I'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.